Peace and blessings, family. I'm your brother in the struggle, our leaf. And today we would like to decipher and decipher regarding the life given teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, Hadith. Hadith basically is an Arabic term that means traditional sayings. Now, I mean, to put it in uh, legalese, if you will, it's what we call hearsay testimony. Now, I mean, sometimes a good judge will permit hearsay testimony in a court of law. Sometimes he or she won't. When it comes to spiritual matters or theology or religion, uh, unfortunately, whenever a messenger of God dies, there seems to be a flood of hadiths that come after that messenger. So what happens is, historically, for example, Master Far Muhammad, Almighty God of law in person, teaches us the true historicity or the true history of the prophets, like the physical people that were on earth. Like, I'm just give you just a brief synopsis of what the messenger teaches us. You can find a message to the black man in America in 1965. You can find it in Al-Sayyid Zarab, 1974. You can find it in Theology of Time, 1972. Uh, you can find it in How to Live, 1972. Uh, the fall of America in 1973. But basically, Downable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that Prophet Musa, Prophet Moses, was a half original man. He was half black and half white. He teaches us that the historical person actually went to the caves and hillsides of Europe to civilize the devils who was living uh, an uncivilized life in the caves and hillsides of the Caucasus Mountains at the time. Now, because of Hadith, as time went on, we now have Prophet Moses as some figure that's before a burning bush that leads his people through the Red Sea and this Pharaoh is chasing after him. Where the Ambalaj Muhammad teaches us that never happened in history. The scientists and the historians will tell you, we don't have no history of no Jewish slaves building the Great Pyramid of Giza. Now, I mean, our lessons teaches us the Great Pyramid of Giza weighs 14 billion pounds. Consists of 2,800 blocks. Each block weighs an average of two and a half tons of 5,000 pounds. It is 481 or 764 feet high, depending if you're deep underground measuring it or if you're measuring it from ground surface. So we know the science of the pyramids. We know the science of ancient Kemet or Egypt. We know the science of the Torah, the science of the Gospels, the science of the Quran. You know what I mean? But historically, in real life, when Jesus was on earth, or Esau, or Yahshua, or whatever, you know, they don't even had a name right because of Hadith, you know. But the historical figure, Master Muhammad teaches us, he got stabbed and rigor mortis instantly set up. It's like the police. The police tell you, put your hands up. You know, we put our hands up in this day and time. And they tell you to turn around and put your hands up because you got revolvers and automatic weapons. You got guns. So to protect themselves... Now, I mean, they tell you, turn around, put your hands up. Or put your hands on the car, lay down on the ground, whatever. They had that modern version. But say 2,000 years ago, you was a Roman soldier. You would tell a person uh, to put your hands up. So they wanted you to put your hands up because they had little knives, 18-inch daggers on that side that was like a gun back then. They may have a sword. So when Jesus was told to put his hands up, he put his hands up in the shape of a cross. Now, I mean, a historical man was stabbed in his heart and death was so instantaneous. Now, I mean, in a fraction of a second that he died in the form of a cross or in the position of a cross or in the shape of a cross. I mean, if a man has his feet stand at a 45 or 90 degree angle and he put his hands up and his head, he's now in a cross shape. If he gets stabbed in the heart, he's going to die like that. Now, if you be like, okay, Yahshua died uh, in a cross position, and that's all on the news and the newspapers, back then, it's going through different languages. And I mean, different levels of education and misinterpretation, misrepresentation, mistransliteration, mistranslations. So eventually it comes out, Jesus died on the cross. But the Holy Quran says, no, he, you know, I mean, he was made to appear such. I mean, it looked like he, you know, but he didn't die literally on the cross the way we think in this day and time. So the original teachings get lost because of all of the spookism that the believers add into the original teachings. 
All right. So, you know, I mean, we look at Prophet Muhammad of 1400 years ago. That's what Muhammad thing is with the messengers. Like he thought he could reform the devils. Now, I mean, he had a heart of mercy. He was a loving man. His, his wife, Khadija, was a successful businesswoman. Now, juxtapose that to this modern day versions and interpretations of Islam based on Hadith as opposed to the Quran. Now, I mean, we now got Prophet Muhammad as some spooky guy. Now, I mean, Prophet Muhammad was a, a warrior. A, a, he was an intelligent man, a strong man, a loving man. He was a family man. He was an, a nationalist. Now, I mean, he loved the law. He loved the Quran. He loved Islam. Now, he loved his people. He wanted to bring about unity. Now, I mean, but things get lost in translations. Things get lost in time. Now, I mean, you know, this is why we say, you know, Truth is the daughter of time. As time goes on, it manifests the truth. But when you're in that moment, now I mean, you're in the middle, in the middle of that time, that motion. Now I mean, that vibration throughout the universe. People would love to take fact and remove it and stick fantasy in this place because the fantasy is just so more attractive. Now I mean, you know, if you take an orange tree and a lemon tree, and you say, okay, how can I get this original orange? How can I get this original lemon? You can't do it, I mean, because the orange and the lemon has to grow according to the universal order of things. But if you come in and you take a lemon branch and you take a saw and cut off one of them small lemon branches and you cut off a little orange branch off the orange tree and you paste or connect or tape or glue that lemon branch to that orange tree, you can now graft a new nation or you can graft a new type of fruit. You can graft a grapefruit that's more juicier and I mean more sweeter. It may not even have seeds. You can, you can produce something more luxurious, more luscious, more delicious, but it won't have the natural vitamins and nutrients that Mother Nature put in that original fruit. So when it comes to the fruit of Islam, we have to be careful about hadiths. Now, I mean, what I, what I hear so much of, and it's heartbreaking, is brothers and sisters, FOIs and MGTs, running off with hadiths. This is what our Sunni brothers and sisters did. We can't run off with the hadiths. The, the, the Jews can't run off, the Hebrews can't run off with the sayings, they, they can't run off with uh, the traditions. They got to be like, okay, we need tradition. We need, oh, that's beautiful. That's good to hear. But is it supported by the Torah? We working with the Torah, the Holy Torah. We're working with Yahweh. We understand it's Jehovah, God, the Lord, the King of Kings, but we're working with Yahweh. You know I mean, we're working with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We understand Hadith. They had that place. We understand um, people saying, oh, Master Muhammad said this or did this. Dhamma Balaj Muhammad said this or did this. He told me this one day. And it's like, and you're telling us now, 10 years later, 20 years later, 30, 40, 50 years after the fact. And when he was here, you never wrote that in no publications. You didn't say that on a rostrum. You didn't... And, I mean, put in Muhammad speaks, um, it, you know, it certainly contradicts what the messenger himself recorded in message to the black man in fall of America and lost found miles in lesson number one, lost found miles in lesson number two. So when we study our lessons, you know, when we study the messenger's original divine direct teachings, he told us in how to leave my teachings as it is. You know what I mean, so all this spooky stuff that's popping up about everything. You know what I mean? It's just so much stuff is just getting ridiculous. And the mythology, the fantasy is replacing the facts where we're getting lost in the Hadiths. You know what I mean? And people like, um, you know, Sahih Muslim, Bukhari, Muslim. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But what is the reality of this? What is the Ahak? What is the reality? Because the Holy Quran teaches us a law is the sure reality. Allahu and Ahad. The God is the reality. What is the real teachings of the Ambalaj Muhammad? The real teachings of the Ambalaj Muhammad is in the Supreme Wisdom, Volume 1 and 2 in 1957. 
The real teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is in Message to the Black Man in America, 1965. The real teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is in How to Eat to Live, Volume 1, Book 1, 1967. And we can go on and on and on. Now, I mean, the Ambalaj Muhammad's original teachings. Now, I mean, you can't look at um, something a person said over 44 years and just run off with that. Now, I mean, you got to look at the totality of the teachings. You got to look at it in context. You got to look at it as uh, a holistic view. And I mean, otherwise you get spooky. The messenger warned us. He said, don't take my teachings hook, line, and sinker. Now, I mean, he told us, he said, piece it apart. Now, I mean, you see, he told us, study the truth, and if you find it to be the truth, then you lay claim to it. You don't lay claim to it because somebody said it. I mean, everybody, you know, going to remember things, but memory is a fickle thing. Now, I mean, people remember things wrong. People who get dates wrong, they get facts wrong, they they get the context wrong. Now, I mean, you know, the 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 um the the intent or the meaning of it gets lost over time. So you got to be careful about these high deeds. Now, I mean, and the nation of Islam, as a FOI and MGT, whenever I teach something, uh, whenever a minister, a captain, a secretary, a friend, a foe say something about. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teachings in your head, you should be able to make a cross reference. You should shepherdize that statement and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I remember reading about the message did teach that in our lesson, um, English lesson. Well, oh, yeah, that is, I don't know where, but somewhere in, I remember reading that in the, um, the Holy Message to the Black Man. I remember reading that in the Holy How to Eat the Live. I remember reading about that in, um, I remember, you know what I mean? But we can't take Hadiths over the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Peace and blessings, family. The struggle continues.